set the language to English, of course. And of course, tap to click isn't enabled by default. It's something that I have to enable in the system preferences. So you have to click physically pushing on the trackpad. Select your country or region. Oh, look at that. The battery is actually full or almost full. That's beautiful. And even the time is already synced and we're not even online yet. Can I get online from here already? Okay, cool. Select your country or region. I am still in Italy, so I go with Italy for now. Okay, preferred languages English and Italian. The input source is Italian because this is the Italian layout keyboard and dictation, of course, must be English, but not United Kingdom. I would prefer United States. English, United States. Yes, I'm definitely gonna use the mouse because I I've never been a fan of touchpads and trackpads. Let's change this to United States. Continue. And we also get these cool accessibility settings here. So for people with vision, motor, hearing or cognitive problems, they can basically click here and a couple of accessibility features get enabled automatically. And that's pretty cool. So I don't have any of these issues here, so not now. And now we can get online. Now, since this laptop only has two USB-C type ports, doesn't come with a Ethernet port, I can add one with the USB-C hub that I'm gonna use, but for now, we're gonna go with the Wi-Fi. I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi, if I can find which one it is. I forgot which one is mine. Okay. This one is mine. Okay, the keyboard is amazing. I just used it to type the password. Kind of like when I did the Alienware unboxing, it's on my Italian channel. The first thing I typed with the keyboard was the password of the Wi-Fi. Same thing here, and it feels amazing. I prefer the keyboard on the Alienware laptop a bit, but maybe because it feels a little bit more like um, a desktop keyboard. I don't know, I'm just not used to Mac keyboards, but I mean, it still feels great nonetheless. It does feel different than uh, the keyboard of my previous MacBook, that's for sure. The buttons uh, seem a little bit more clicky, while the, the keys on my old MacBook were a little bit more mushy. All right, we are online now, so let's continue here. I don't want to migrate anything, not now. And now I can log in with my Apple ID. That's why I brought my old iPhone here, even though now I use that Android phone. That's because using an iPhone makes uh, logging into Apple ID and syncing with iCloud a lot quicker. Oh, I remember the password on the first try. Nice. Oh, you won't believe it. I got 666 on the verification code. Okay, I have read and agreed to the iCloud and Apple media services terms and conditions. Okay, I found my my old magic mouse. This is still better than using the touchpad for me. I mean, it's a great touchpad and I like it, but uh, I think that using the magic mouse is a little bit uh, better for me because I prefer mice in general. I hope this works right away. If I didn't insert the batteries upside down. I don't think I did. Are the batteries charged? Uh, I'm gonna set, oh, okay. I think it works. Okay, I think I have to finish the setup before be able to pair this magic mouse with a MacBook. Okay, so I'm gonna set this here, full name, it's fine, account name. I want Elia1995. Password. This can be anything. This is the computer's login password. I won't even need to use this password that much because I can use Touch ID. That should be a little faster to do stuff with that mouse. Still nothing? Nope. It turned on, so it is on, but it's not 
paired with the MacBook yet. I hope this works because this is from a 2011 iMac. But it should work, right? I mean, it's still an Apple product. It still uses Bluetooth. I guess it should work. Now it's connecting to iCloud and probably gathering some backup uh, stuff, I don't know. And this step here usually takes a while, according to the videos that I saw of people unboxing this PC. So let's see. How's the battery doing? Can't click these icons yet. Okay, I can use the passcode from my iPhone 7. All right, connected, continue, express setup. Okay, continue. Analytics, no thanks, continue. Screen time, okay. Continue. Ooh, okay, I definitely wanna enable Siri because that's just cool. It's not as cool as Google Assistant. I think Google Assistant does a lot more funny things too, but Siri is also pretty cool. Continue. Ask Siri in English United States. Continue. Okay, let's set up a Siri. A Siri. Good afternoon. Okay, the Siri of my iPhone just replied. I'm not sure. Shut up. Shut up. Hey Siri, open the documents folder. Hey Siri, show my downloads. Hey Siri, what's the weather? Hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? Okay, and Siri is ready. Now every single time I was doing an A Siri thing, the Siri on my iPhone 7 here turned on. I actually don't even need this phone on anymore at this moment. I'll turn it off. There we go. Okay, let's continue. Um, not now, thanks. I don't want to share my audio recordings. They are snippets that actually improve the detection and uh, artificial intelligence of Siri, but no thanks. I can see, yeah, I'm gonna leave this on. And now it's time to set up Touch ID. Continue. Place your finger on the Touch ID button which is also the power button. And it works just like an iPhone Touch ID. I'm gonna use my right index finger. Let's get the sides pretty nicely. And Touch ID is ready. Nice. You can't wait to, to try it. Uh, Apple Pay, no, set up later. I don't want, uh, I don't use that. Oh yes, I can use the dark mode. Yeah, beautiful dark mode. Yes, I'm gonna keep it uh, dark. I mean, it would be more classic to have this white because Mac OS X has always been white, but so has Windows, even though now it has a dark mode too and I use it. So I'm gonna use dark mode because I prefer it. It just looks a lot more cool and elegant in my opinion i love it all right continue truth on display now this is something that people actually don't like to have on it makes a very slight difference here i don't see a lot of difference and i'm gonna disable this because we, since i do video editing i'm gonna do video editing on this laptop it's gonna mess up with my color correction and i don't want that so I'm gonna disable Truth on display as soon as I have the chance. So continue for now. Unfortunately, you can't disable it from here, which kind of sucks. And now we're finally on the desktop. Yes. And the magic mouse is not pairing, unfortunately. Let's see if I can pair it manually. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna enable the magnification on the dock bar because I prefer having it like that. And uh, let's see, mouse. No mouse found. It's searching. Wait for a Bluetooth mouse to be discovered or connect a USB mouse. It is on, I see the LED flashing on the back. I don't remember how to pair this. Is there like a secret button or something to press? 
because I honestly can't remember. Okay, it found it. It found it. Yes, it found it. Okay, continue. It even has a name because I assigned it uh, when I used it on my iMac back in the day. Okay, continue. Even though it's old, okay, it, it works. I'm gonna increase the tracking speed. That's much better. And I'm gonna enable the secondary click. Now, for some dumb reason, secondary click isn't enabled by default. And by the way, I'm actually gonna continue doing this screen recording because it would be much better. Now, to screen record on this laptop, you press command space to open the spotlight search, and then you just type quick time. I'm gonna use a better uh, video recording solution than QuickTime Player in the future and it's a program called ScreenFlow that I've been using since my first MacBook but since QuickTime is pre-installed I'm gonna use this for now just to have it quick okay so we basically have QuickTime Player open right now actually there is a better shortcut without opening QuickTime Player you can just press Shift Command and 5 and now you can actually record the entire screen and just like that i am now recording the screen of my new macbook now i'm still using my my magic mouse but i'm going to the trackpad section and i'm gonna enable tap to click so this way if i just tap i can click by tapping without having to actually physically push on the trackpad and I also want to increase the tracking speed to fast and that's a lot better already double tap with one finger oh okay that's for pictures though okay I'm gonna invert the scroll direction and same here for when I use the okay it's already applied so I'm going to the accessibility tab and then down here under pointer control I think it is trackpad options I don't know why they moved it over here it doesn't make any sense in my opinion enable dragging three finger drag okay and now if I use three fingers on my trackpad I can move windows around just like that okay I'm gonna use uh, Safari because this is the new Safari for macOS Big Sur and uh, one thing I'm curious about is how is my inner speed because I'm connected with Wi-Fi right now so I wonder is my internet speed doing great or not so let's see how powerful the Wi-Fi of this MacBook is that's something that I've never seen in a MacBook unboxing so far so let's see I, I wonder what we get hmm I don't think it's connected to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and that's why it's so slow yep it's not connected to the 5 gigahertz unfortunately so by default I think you have to change this Go network preferences and then under Wi-Fi there's the 5 years one right here so make sure to connect to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi if you want the full speed of your connection or almost full speed of your connection okay now ah interesting couldn't connect to the 5 gigahertz okay whatever let's try the USB-C dongle on this that I have and let's see if I can get uh, 1 gigabit from this okay so this is my USB-C dongle I've been using this for a couple of years now uh, I started using it in um, university because uh, my Alienware laptop had a spare USB-C port that I couldn't use with anything so I decided to get this USB-C dongle to take advantage of that 
extra USB port and this comes with uh, two USB 2.0 ports two USB 3.0 ports and on the other side we get uh, headphone jack an HDMI port I don't know if this actually works and we're gonna try this too an Ethernet port and a pass-through Thunderbolt USB-C port over here over here we have a micro SD and an SD card reader which is very important so I'm gonna plug this in into a USB-C port here and uh, now let's see if this works right away I'm taking this Ethernet cable right off my main PC here and I'm gonna plug this into the LAN port over here and look at that it actually works we have a USB oh 10 100 1000 let's see if it's actually gigabit all right and uh, maybe it's conflicting with the Wi-Fi so I'm gonna turn the Wi-Fi off for, for the time being because I'm gonna use this with the with the Ethernet cable anyway and let's have a look oh look at that it works <laughs> okay so you can get a gigabit Ethernet connection on the MacBook Pro by using a USB-C hub or dongle like this one. Now this one also has an HDMI port and I want to test that too, but we're going to do it in a moment. There's an actual speed test uh, on the Mac App Store. I have to sign in separately on the App Store for some reason, even though I already signed in on the operating system. That's dumb all right i'm standing i could never get an hdmi port on this on that usb c dongle to work on the alien wire now i wonder if that actually works on this so i can use an external bigger monitor while editing my videos on final cut pro this might not be the newest uh, most modern monitor i have but uh, i don't want to dismount my PC monitor right now, so I'm gonna use this one here and uh, we'll see if it actually works. I got this uh, VGA to HDMI adapter here to get this to work and we're just gonna connect this over here on this USB-C dongle and of course let's give it some power Okay, so <laughs> while I was recording, I ran out of space on my SD card and unfortunately now my dongle is been used here, so I can't empty it and continue recording uh, on the SD card. So I just plugged my camera on my capture card, like how I use it uh, every night for my Twitch streams. So now I'm recording of the capture card on my PC. So if you notice a slight difference in the quality right now, 30 FPS and stuff like that, it's because of that. So anyways, I connected this monitor here to the HDMI port on this USB-C dongle and I gave it power. Now let's find out if it works. Cause I never got this to work before, so let's see. 